I'm doing well. Happy to be here. Uh, Jones is a uh, part of uh, CTF Room, Cyberspace Kenya, uh, Blacks in Cyber, and among so many other uh, platforms and uh, communities. And uh, he's really been, oh, also CyberCon as well. And uh, he's been doing such great works. If you don't know Jones, Nikamo uh, Konchingine, but yeah. Jones is one of the <laughs> great legends we have here in Kenya, and uh, glad to have you on board. And uh, yeah, floor is all yours. Karibu sana to Hat the Box Kenya, and uh, yeah, take it away. Well, thank you very much, Fraser. Open up and blush, kidogo, because I think whoever you're describing wasn't really me. Eh, anyway, so so guys, um. Thank you very much for showing up for this particular session. And um, uh, first of all, let me confirm if you guys are able to hear me clearly. I'm having some issues with my um, my internet. I have some kids in the sitting room who are watching YouTube, so I'm fighting with their bandwidth, Kidogo. So if I break uh, Kidogo, just please let me know. Um, I like to mix Swahili and English, but mostly I speak uh, English, meaning Mzungu. And Kobe Kutana Mimi, you'll see Mini Mzungu. I'm very light skinned. And um, well, for those of you, that is for those of you who haven't met me. So when you uh, have to happen to have a physical um, meetup, just look for the lightest person around. That will be me. And uh, John Collins, I saw you mentioned that the challenge is very simple. And I agree with you. Actually, it was very, very simple. Uh, I believe, uh, if I may ask you, how long did it take to uh, for you to complete? Done. Uh, five minutes, I believe. Five minutes. Yeah. Exactly. So actually, that was the essence of the whole challenge. The challenge was supposed to take less than um, 15 minutes if you felt it was a little bit uh, difficult. And for me, I feel um, this was the simplest challenge I've ever come up with. I don't know if I'll ever come up with such a challenge again. So. Um, uh, let me start by sharing my screen. Okay. Let me see. So uh, please confirm if you're able to see my screen. I'm able to see my screen. Are you guys able to see my screen? Ah, awesome. So um, as I was saying, uh, this was one of the simplest challenge I've ever created. And it actually involved um. Uh, so many hands up. That's that's good to know that you guys are able to see this. So um, this challenge was basically trying to um, chain IDOR, uh, insecure direct object reference, and um, uh, password reset. Uh, because uh, many of you uh, or some of you have been into bug bounty, you realize that um, it's very easy to take take over somebody's account, especially when it comes to the um, forgot password field. It's um, when you find some developers who are not so good at um, the whole design logic and stuff, um, they make those kind of forms very, very um, vulnerable. And by forms, I mean not essentially just uh, the password reset form. I'm talking about the login form. I'm talking about the sign up form. I'm talking about the file upload. Especially if you happen to find some place with a file upload, try and pitch some uh, pitch some camp there because there's always something around that particular area. So um, I know I've started uh, speaking so much without uh, officially introducing myself. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, my name is Jones Baraza. Uh, my, uh, I go by Recon, if you've come across that, um, um, how do you call these things? The AKAs, if you've seen those AKAs somewhere, Recon, uh, that must be me. And the reason why I chose Recon is because for me, I feel in any, uh, security engagement practice. The most important step is often doing a reconnaissance. And that's why even if you've done, for those of you, not us, because I've not done OECP, if you happen to fail, they say, try to try harder. So try to uh, uh, enumerate more. So basically, my emphasis is normally on um, try and gather as much information as possible um, regarding your target. And in that regard, I'll, after my small walkthrough, I'm going to speak briefly about the challenge that I'm building up. It's a premium uh, uh, vault that I'm building at CTF Room, which will be 
just technically um, discussing this uh, recon in a bit more detail. So um, let me just move over to Mischief. Where are you, Mischief? So uh, CTF room, okay. for those of you who are not familiar with the platform. Yes, yes. Could you reshare your screen? Oh, sorry. Uh, just a moment. Um, Is confirmed now if you would see it. Now it's good, yeah. Right. So I'm switching tabs. Also confirm if you're able to see my tab, the, 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 new, the new tab. Yeah, yeah. Ah, awesome. So this is mischief, mischief challenge, um, which um is a web challenge. I remember when I was speaking to Fiza initially concerning uh, the challenge to come up with for this particular end of year, uh, Hack the Box Kenya Meetup. I had uh, intimated to him that I was going to come up with a uh, basic Linux challenge, just the Linux box and all that. But I realized that for a two hour session, it would have been a bit tricky to come up with uh, for you, for someone to solve it. So I opted to the last minute option actually I came up with the uh, mischief challenge which was a very simple 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 challenge as you just about to see so when you launch the challenge I already launched it here and um you get this particular uh form this is a registration form so when you try to view source code I believe many of you try to do that uh don't worry this is VP community engine this is a software I've been building for the past 12 years it's an open source social networking uh, platform. So this is an engine that I normally use when I'm building some of this application. It's a bit hardened because I've really worked on it for a couple of years. So that's why I opted to use this one because I know uh, most of you, if you try to hack it in any other way, you will need to be able to do it. So if you see VP community engine somewhere, know that is um, something that I've been building for the past couple of years. So uh, looking at the source code, there's nothing here. Um, you have a nonce, so basically this is to prevent CSRF. And um, what else? We have um, these hidden fields, which are very interesting for those of you who are keen. Because, okay, this is not part of the particular challenge, but I'm just pointing out uh, when you're doing a uh, recon, especially on a web application, some of these things should actually tickle you. Because when you look at uh, a hidden uh, input field, then you have this ice op. What does it even mean? So this, this, this some um, gibberish stuff. What is it? Most likely, it's uh, encrypted, not hashed, because at some point it has to be decrypted so that you get the actual value. So if um, you're so keen into this, but then this, I would say this, this can easily be hacked as well because it's uh, encrypted in a way that you can easily decrypt, uh, which actually makes me think that I need to change it. I'll think about it later on uh, tomorrow if I have some time. So um, basically for this particular login uh, registration page, there's nothing interesting. Uh, even if you were to look at this uh, CSS style sheets, the application itself, I mean the JavaScript application, there's nothing of interest here. So um, you, I will, for me, uh, when, okay, I'll give you from my perspective what I normally do. When I look at the source code and, and don't find um, something very interesting, although I've already seen that there's the use of some kind of encryption on those particular forms, I take notes, I normally write my notes somewhere, so I would have written that somewhere. Then I come and try and uh, create a new uh, account. Uh, email, let me give it uh, me at jones.com. Uh, then the password. Password. Okay. I remember the email. Me at johns.com. Uh, password, login. Also, you can look at the uh, login form itself. Same as the um, registration page. There's nothing of much concern here, or, or rather of interest. Still has the norms and it has the ISOP. This is encrypted. The norms, this looks like a hash. Is it a hash? MD5? Whatever it is, I don't know what it is. So it's, I can write some notes somewhere and see. Maybe I'll revisit it back when, um, when, I'm, when I have some time or having to come across something of interest. So I come back and log in. So you log in, you get the dashboard. Dashboard is pretty much straightforward. There's nothing there. So you look at dashboard, click dashboard. 
Yeah, uh -huh. try looking at the links up. Akuna. There are no gate parameters. Uh -huh. So, uh, okay, look at that also. View source code. Or is it taking long? Yeah. So, you, while it loads, you try to visit other pages to see this logout is my profile. So, let's load up my profile. I think these guys are watching. Internet has slowed down dramatically. Let's just be a little patient. Still loading. Okay, so we have um, the edit my profile uh, page, the profile page. So here, this is a very interesting page. And uh, for some of us, we'll see that we should have focused on this particular page because all the exploits are here. And one thing that I wanted to mention is that um, this particular challenge did not require you to use any tool at all. No tool at all, not even uh, not even um, Babsuit. This is something that you're just logging in, uh, you checking it out, uh, you source code. If you checked out the the uh, the hint, the hint here, where is the hint? The hint was basically F12. So all your engagements were basically trying to review the source code, the, 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 how the backend looks like. Uh, not the backend rather, but how the source uh, looks like. So let's look at this. So we have um, basic, let's concentrate on the edit my profile. So let's find the edit my profile. Uh, change email address. So yeah, we have the the first form which is here. This is um, it's sending the request to do users. So the request is being uh, processed here. The post request. We have a hidden ISOP. So this thing is almost constant everywhere. We see. Okay. We have the nonce. It's also here. Then we have the user ID. Now this this should be a very huge red flag for anybody who is familiar with this kind of a setup. Because one thing that um, uh, many developers do and they fail uh, in my view is the fact that when trying to uh, process uh, these kinds of forms, they use, uh, they integrate um, the user IDs or any other identifying information of that particular account in the form itself. That, if you've been doing some bit of idle, you realize that it's a, a very good um, attacking point, or rather it's, a, it's, it's an attack vector when it comes to kind of, uh, web applications that utilize this kind of hidden inputs, because the user ID shouldn't be there. So if you're tracking that user, I believe you should be tracking the, that user using um, sessions, because sessions are basically server side. And for those of us who are so much into PHP, and I know for those guys who are throwing shade at PHP, so for those of us who are into PHP, we realize that we, PHP offers us the ability to store uh, the sessions from the server side. And that said, you don't have to show, uh, we don't have to, 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 to input, I mean, to, to share this, this hidden input piece here with uh, personal identifiable information, because it becomes a uh, very easy again. And um, also, uh, talk, speaking about uh, this particular kind of setup, where also uh, the developer stores that uh, identifiable information, especially the user ID through um, cookie. I say, uh, uh, um, when you look at um, the session cookies that are stored on the browser itself. So that's also a very, very um, interesting. Uh, I normally call them interesting because they offer an opportunity for you to probe and see if it breaks. So, so those are some of the things that you look at when you're doing either. I'll also come up with a with a with a vault um, in the near future, outlining the different ways in which you're able to exploit either. How to identify potential vulnerabilities to do the either. And for the bug bounty hunters out there, you realize that either has a very good bounty. So if you're able to chain um, um, an either attack to maybe take over a user account or Perhaps for our case here, take over an admin account. Trust me, can get some very good bounty out. Monza uh, was saying, we have the input type hidden here. So uh, if you're writing notes, you write it somewhere. So there's a user ID exposed here. Anything other than this, we have uh, nothing of important, nothing of important here. You look at the change password. So something else that you normally look at when uh, you're doing this kind of recon is you... Um, if, for instance, this input uh, hidden user ID was uh, here, 
then that means that you will be, you will have been able to if you're able to identify what the the mechanism or how the the logic behind the working of that particular website you will be able to change the a, another person's a password but now that would be a bit tricky because just knowing the user id of the pass of the person you're changing does not essentially well, mean that you're able to yes yes have you guys lost me You're Hello. Good. Hey. You're good. You're okay. You're okay. Awesome. If I, I had somebody shouting, so I thought maybe my potential to have lost someone. So um, where was I? So as I was saying, for some vulnerabilities where they have the input hidden uh, with the exposing the user ID, whether it's in plain text or uh, as, uh, or it's encrypted, uh, for the password, you are able to change uh, another person's um, password. And I remember I, there's, a, there's a time I came across, I, I came with a certain challenge. I don't know whether it was for um, for Africa Hakon, which we also basically utilize the same concept where you're able to change the password of somebody else through this particular uh, attack vector. So let's concentrate here. So we've identified that uh, this, these are hidden input. So uh, the hidden input, um, user ID, then let's now look at it from this perspective. So this is me at John's Baraza. Am I, am I able to change my my email address? Let me see. So let me say John's from John's to double S. Am I able to change this? Oh, okay. So the system allows you to change uh, the email address. You, you're able to change the um, particular email address. So if that is the case, then does that mean that um, I could also be able to change somebody else's email address? So that's why we go back to the user ID. And for the user ID, when you look at this value here, this, um, this is an encrypted value. And I know sometimes it may take you a while to figure out the kind of encryption used. So for me, I normally use um, is this um, let me just refresh this so that I get the correct uh, value. Let me just give me a moment. This. come back to user IDs, NZME, then try to figure out what kind of encryption this is. Uh -huh. Come back here, let me paste it here. Let's try and analyze it and see what kind of encryption has been used. Hmm. What a robot. So we have a uh, suggestions here on um, possible encryption used for this particular uh, input field. So you have the ROT cipher, you have the CISA cipher, monoalphabetic a substitution, you have the cipher disk wheel, you have the base 64 coding. So um, for my case, I will try to uh, go through all this and see if they work. Actually, they have given a one, how many are they? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, seven is enough for you to try out and see whether it makes perfect sense. But, um, how about if you can simplify this whole thing by coming to chat GPT instance? Let's, for those of you who have not interacted with it, let's see if chat GPT can, can give us a, a, an answer to this. So let's see. Um, what encryption has been used? And uh, is encrypt, this decrypt, sorry, encrypt it. Sorry. Okay, you don't have to say please. I, I'm, a, I'm a very um, humble guy. So I even tell my computer, please shut down. Please um, do this. So let's see if chat GPT has. I'm sorry, but I don't have enough to know where you're asking about. Aha. Okay. Um, Something funny is that I tried this a couple of. Yes. Yeah. So the reason it has said that is because it's not really an encryption. It's encoded text it isn't encrypted so try asking ah, it again yes. instead of using encryption say the word encoded thank you very much john that see 
Ah, nice. Ah, thank you. Thank you for that. So, um, hmm. Hmm. So it looks like the string has been coded using base64. And also remember this suggested that we have base64 also encoding. So let's see. If you decode the string, the result is 73. So let's confirm. Um base 64 decode online. Sorry, I need to I, I like to do the Google stuff more. So so let's try and decode this uh, particular string again. SMR 74, 74, let's try this and confirm. It's 73, sorry, 73. The chat GPT told us it was 73. Okay, so it's 73. So that means that this value here, uh, the user ID value is 73. If it's 73, that means that I'm user ID 73. And if I'm user ID 73, that means that possibly an admin might have had an earlier um, what um, user ID, and more in most cases when you look at most web applications, they, uh, the admins have the first um, user IDs. For WordPress, there was uh, uh, initially WordPress assigned user ID one to an admin of that particular uh, uh, web application. That is in WordPress. I don't know if they do that anymore, but they, even if they do that, they still offer you an opportunity to change that user ID. So in such a kind of um, scenario, most web, uh, web, web applications, um, cause you have, you, you're the first person to use that particular application. So you, chances are your user ID will be among the top five, top 10, depending on how many uh, admins you have on that particular system. So if you have this, then the next thing we will try to do is, um, let's try D73. So let's try and encode um, user ID one. Call that to one. This this is encoded, so let's try and change this. I don't know why this is not. Why are you not one? Why are you not two? Let's try and change this to so that. Okay, then we change. We try to change the the user email address of the person of the possibly we are assuming that mean to. Say admin at you.com. But in this case, in real life, when, when, you, when you're trying to change this password, make sure you uh, change it to, uh, not the password, sorry, the email address. Make sure you change it to an email address that you have access to and you can control. So that when you're going to try to change the uh, password, you will be able to receive that particular uh, password reset link. So for this particular case, I'm just entering this random one because uh, if you're able to get to the final step, you realize that we're not sending out any email. We are just giving you the password reset link. So let's change this to admin at you.com. Let's see if it changes. Yeah. So you see, uh, when you look at this, you see we still have the me at jones.com. So that means our email address was never changed. But then we changed the email address of user ID number one. So we log out in trying to uh, see whether we can now uh, um, exploit that particular change. So we come to, you know, we've changed that to admin at you.com. See if we can get a link. Yeah, so we, um, in the real life, again, uh, once you enter the correct email, ad, uh, the email address that associated with a particular user in that particular system, um, the system is going to send you an email with a password reset link. And in our case, this is the password reset link, which I do not send it uh, via email, I just displayed it here. So once you have this link, you're able to change that particular user's um, password. So let's get the link and try and see if we can change uh, that particular password. Paste and go. We have the password reset link. We come here and see, uh, let's change the password to that. Let me just use this. Search and yeah, so the password has been changed successfully. So we've been able to change the password. You've been able to change the email address. So now let's try ad uh, signing admin at you.com. And uh, the password that we've just changed to and we'll sign in. 
there you have it. And you will now uh, been able to take over that admin users account. So congratulations for figuring out, figuring out how to chain IDA with password reset to gain access to the admin account. For your efforts, please find the flag. This is the flag. That was how easy this particular challenge was. And it was it has taken me roughly more than 10 minutes because I'm talking while I'm trying to demonstrate and also trying to explain why attempt this and not attempt that. But in real sense, just as John Collins said, this should take you less than five minutes to do. Something very simple and something that can has actually very huge ramifications in the cybersecurity world. If you're able to take over an admin user's account, then trust me, you can, ask, you can imagine if you're able to become an admin on Twitter, for example or Facebook, LinkedIn, or any other a very popular application. Um, applications could be so, so huge. So um, in a nutshell, that was the challenge where you're able to just um, exploit IDOR, so you exploit IDOR to change uh, the admin user's account email address, then use um, an email address that you have access to, then having changed that uh, admin user's email to an uh, email address that you have access to, you able to password reset that particular um, account using the new email that you've set up, then change the password and you're now able to control that particular um, admin account. As you can see, this is an admin and the flag is here. So um, I think that's how easy it was. So I welcome questions, if any. Any questions? Uh, Jones, in the chat section, uh, there's someone who is saying, what if you throw uh, the stream to CyberChef? Yeah, you could uh, try uh, CyberChef. Actually, it's actually uh, interesting. Um, and uh, as you've seen, we have so many platforms that you can try and Nini, and uh, um, decipher what kind of encoding or encryption has been used. So don't be um, uh, tied to the ones that personally I'm using. For 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 for, for uh, as a matter of fact, actually, this decrypt message here, I came across across it uh, a week ago. Before the dec code, I was using something else. So if you find something that works for you, please do so uh, i'm not right now i'm not going to try and throw it through cyber chef you can as well try it and give us feedback and see if it still works but now uh since we already have the big gun here the chat gpt i think things have become so very extra easy when it comes to um ctfs super easy I know, John, John, you're laughing because it has halved your time. I know you normally uh, finish these challenges in two minutes. Now you'll finish them in 30 seconds. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Any question? Any person who faced a difficulty, a challenge, or wanted to understand something more about a particular area? But now I hope you realize why you said that this was a very simple challenge. Very, very simple. Um, I have a question. Okay, same. Uh, yes, please. Could you, could you do the challenge? Um, as in, could you do like a walkthrough of the challenge that you released before this one, the one that had the get <laughs> ignore? Because you know, I found that challenge very interesting because, um, the week that yeah. you. Mm -hmm released it i think two weeks before that um someone posted on mm -hmm. twitter that tesla <laughs> like tesla.com had the mm -hmm. .git ignore so like you can imagine um the chaos uh that yeah. erupted yeah so i found your challenge really interesting um thank you very much i think we'll make an arrangement with fraser at some point during this year hopefully before uh, the first quarter of this year ends so that I can take you guys through this uh, that particular challenge. It was interesting because I remember uh, Collins, we kept chatting for a while because you no, know, I also felt I I said it was an easy challenge, but then again, after looking at it again, I saw it wasn't an easy challenge. It was more or less a medium to hard level challenge. But uh, hopefully, um, based on our next arrangements with Fraser. I think we'll go through that particular challenge again. And also, um, if 
you follow me on Twitter, you'll realize that I share so many, so much information regarding some of the um, exploits I come across. So for the example, the dot ignore issue came about because uh, I remember I did make a, a Twitter post telling guys that um, for those of us who are in, into web applications, so you should also con uh, consider Git ignore as a possible source of very useful information. And something funny is that somebody came out and told me, um, say that uh, that was not practical, that the Git ignore file does not um, essentially contain any information that is useful. So I wanted to prove him wrong, and that's why I came up with that particular challenge. And funny enough is, um, when I came up with that particular challenge, it um, more or less there are so many organizations that already have that dot git ignore a file on their servers. And basically what it tells you is that um, just as the robots file, it tells you, uh, unlike, okay, unlike the robots file, because the robots file is actually aimed at um, the robots, the Google bots and all that. So it's uh, trying to tell them, please don't index this folder. Please don't do that to this folder. But the git ignore file specifically tells you this file has to be ignored. And by ignore, it means that please don't uh, consider this file at all. And as, as a curious person, you'd like to ask yourself, why, why am I being told not to? consider this file or why am I being asked not to ignore this particular folder? So that's where most of the gist is. And um, John Collins, I hope maybe with some time we'll be able to go through that particular challenge. How about you go through it through it with them because you solved it. I think you're the only one who solved it. The two of you, the two of you guys who solved it, but I believe the second guy who solved it must have consulted you. Yeah, he How called me. He called me. <laughs> exactly. Exactly, because I knew nobody else could have solved that challenge unless they reached out to you. Oh, uh, yeah. So glitch, I see glitch is typing. So while glitch is typing, please allow me to say something about uh, the vault that I'm building. I'm building um, a, vault, a premium vault. Uh, by a premium vault, I mean, this is not going to be a free vault, because uh, trust me, uh, we, we the cost of hosting some of these challenges is a bit high. So we have to find a way of uh, having a balance. Uh, Fraser, am I in order to speak about that right now? I'm, uh, I should keep quiet. Let me first seek permission. You can definitely talk about it. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> um, so, um, Glitch, Glitch, I'll get back to you briefly. So, um. Okay, methodology, please uh, clarify methodology for that particular challenge or for this particular challenge. Also clarify that then I'll, I'll be able to get back to you. So the, the, the challenge that I'm building, as I, as I was saying, is it's a premium challenge, which um, you'll pay just a small amount of money to access it. But it's going to teach us so much about um, how to conduct recon on a web application. So we're going to cover things like the git ignore, the robots file, um, both passive and active recon, looking at uh, things to do with GitHub, looking at uh, um, session cookies, so, so much. So uh, once I think maybe I should be done with it either tomorrow or latest should be up by Monday. I hope you guys will be able to have a look at it and also give me feedback on the areas that you like uh, improved, uh, what areas you'd like to, um, me to cover. And I'm particularly addressing guys who are into web application security. For me, I started off um, malware i did some malware when i was starting uh doing my let me not doing my life when i was starting out into cyber security i did so much in terms of malware but then i found my passion in web applications that's where i pitched camp and uh, you'll find me talking so much about the uh, web applications so i'm also addressing the guys here who find uh, web applications interesting um please do have a look at that particular vault when it's pu uh, public or published, then give me your feedback. Also suggest areas that you like us to cover moving forward. So glitch, back to glitch. Is it possible to take us through your methodology in general, especially in CTS? Uh, for me, um, um, in most cases, I'll be very honest, I hardly use uh, tools. Because I believe, uh, not in a bad way, but uh, tools, tools are very good actually they are, make your work a whole lot easier. But for me, I feel when I understand um, a, a particular concept better in terms of when I do it uh, manually, just as you've seen, the only tool I may have seen that you used for this particular challenge was uh, trying to understand the kind of en encoding that was used. But other than that, everything else 
just use uh, your uh, focus on what you're able to see and what you're able to interpret. And for me, what makes, uh, I will say what makes my work a whole lot easier when it comes to approaching CTFs is the fact that I've not only um, designing these challenges, but I've also built uh, web applications. So I have come across some of these um, weaknesses. I've come across uh, different, and I've also actually interacted with different types of developers. At some point, I was a senior uh, software engineer in some uh, NGO somewhere in Beirut. So uh, when I was at that particular level, I was able to look at how people, people approach um, development, uh, engineering, and all that. And that informed my kind of perception towards uh, the design logic when it comes to implementing web applications, not just implementing, designing and developing web applications. So I would say I have um, I know you. <laughs> so um, it comes, uh, it comes a bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's. I would say it's a, a little easier for me when it comes to um, um, approaching CTFs from a web perspective, because I. I've interacted with web applications before. I know how they work. I know how requests work. If I'm able to look at a particular code and tell you the potential uh, um, weakness within that particular code and all that. I, I could speak so much regarding that, but my methodology basically, um, I do a lot of manual stuff. Yeah, I do a lot of manual stuff. Yes, I interact with Babsuit. And something funny about Babsuit is, trust me, I don't know much about it. And that's an honest, opinion, not opinion, not an, an honest view I'm giving you guys. I don't know much about Babsuit. I've worked with Intruder, that I know. And mostly I worked with it because somebody was attacking CT from a few weeks ago. And I had to understand how Intruder works so that I could develop um, a counter mechanism for the same. So, well, I'll say software and engineering perspective gives you some strength. So, well, if you are passionate about doing some engineering, in terms of software, that could we could leverage a lot on that. Yes. How glitch I've answered? Don't. But the same, uh, yes, I think yes. in regards to the same same question uh, about CTFs and uh, methodologies in CTFs. I think uh, being that uh, different guys also use various methodologies, I think it would also be great once uh, you're done for guys like uh, John mm -hmm. Collins, uh, guys like uh, I can see the Saudi here, I can see Trusty Ritis on the call, and the likes can just give, uh, just to mention briefly on their various methodologies in terms of tackling the various CTFs. I know there are a couple of guys they banned from uh, tackling that challenge that you had come up with specifically because I wanted to give other guys also an opportunity and I knew these people would have definitely blooded uh, the challenge. So, yeah, I think once you're done, Jones, uh, Trusty Reity, John Collins, Saudi, uh, I can see Malwo as well, Macha, and the likes. You can just mention and uh, say what you your various methodologies because different people have different techniques on how they solve challenges so yeah so john's once you're done you can like let, yeah you can let you can let us know then we can hear from them okay actually i should be done in like two minutes unless somebody has a question uh, or a comment Marlene, i'm still on your back but then from the photo whatsapp So um, I think for me, uh, I would say um, I'm done with this particular walkthrough. If you have any question, follow-up questions, comments, you can always reach out to me. Um, mostly I'm active on Twitter. So find me there, let's let's have a chat. And um, having said that, um, once again, uh, Fraser, thank you very much for having me. And uh, thank you very much for um, considering CTF room as a Potential collaboration, collaborating partner with Hack the Box. I know Hack the Box already has its own platform, but you're trying to also give some spotlight to some of our own local solutions. And for that, I say thank you very much. And for 
um, many of us here also um, who are supporting CTF from, um, especially Malin. Thank you. Um, um, hoping that in the next couple of years we'll be discussing different matters, especially when it comes to our local threat actors and all that. So having said that, well, again, uh, thank you very much, Fraser. Uh, let me stop sharing my screen. I've also had uh, an enjoyable session. Um, looking forward to the next one. Thank you so much, Jones, for all the insight and uh, sharing with us. Uh, always feel free to come on board and uh, yeah, we can see how we can also support each other being that uh, we are uh, in this space together. So uh, now that Jones is done, I'd like to hear uh, in regards to the question that was asked, CTF. There are a couple of guys who are in freaks as well, and uh, I just want them to mention a few things. Uh, there are various methodologies when it comes to CTFs. Probably they, yeah, they can tell us. For those who are new to CTFs, I know there are a couple of guys who are new to CTFs who are trying to get their foothold in CTFs. So I'd like to start off with Don, Don Collins. Probably a few seconds, a few minutes. We have like another one hour extra. So we can go till one hour. We can take 30 minutes, whichever. Yeah. So, John, you can start off then, uh, Saudi, whatever. You'll go next. Uh, okay. I guess for someone who is starting off in CTFs, I'd say, uh, maybe you go to sites like pico ctf um sites like 24 7 ctf uh try to learn for try to learn from those uh platforms because the good thing about those sites is if you get stuck you can like look for for write-up actually a couple write-ups because what i like to do is when i get stuck on a challenge i look for a couple write-ups and I try to follow the guy's methodology and try to see how would I have done this better. If it's like a script they'd have used, I'd be like, how would I make this more efficient? If it's like maybe a brute force script or um, SQL injection, or prototype pollution and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I can't really talk about my methodology in CTFs. I don't please um ctfs this often because you know bright said that i should be banned from playing so anyway uh yeah so i guess that's pretty much it and the thing i've noticed with um ctfs as well is don't necessarily play alone when you're playing a ctf even if it's not like a team-based kind of ctf because what i've noticed is <laughs> and this is very common when you're playing a ctf and you're top of the board, uh, you notice like guys sneak into your DM and be like, you know, how did you solve this challenge? Um, you should always be kind enough to help those guys out because there's a lot of learning that happens during that time. Uh, apart from those obviously who ask for the flags, but there are those people who will come to you and be like, uh, what is your thought process? Like, how have you been able to solve this challenge? um that quick or something so yeah um be open to ask uh for help and yeah just try learn from others i guess probably just to ask because it's something that i personally have noticed uh how automation for you works a great deal in terms of also tackling the ctfs as well there's the manual aspects using VAP and the various tools. And uh, there's the automated part of things whereby you go reach out and automate. So probably you can mention how automation now helps you out in that. So automation basically in a CTF is obviously to make things easier and faster and when i decide to automate something it's something i've seen like a couple times and 
the methodology is you know is, is a step by step you know it's like the same steps so for example uh for like pawn challenges i've automated quite a bit of steps um if you're familiar with them you know finding the offset um what else um controlling the eip or looking for bad characters and you know maybe there's just maybe it's a simple one where you know there's a function that you need to jump to and stuff like that um so what i'd say about automation is try look for those things that you do often um how can i put this better if you feel like you repeat something very often uh try look for a way to automate that and at least now we have chat gpt uh so it can also help you like kind of build uh maybe a script to you know help you automate whatever you wanna automate so for example i've seen someone on twitter post uh <laughs> he he typed on chat gpt um write write me a script um for CVE 2016 something 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 in Python. So I'm guessing that exploit wasn't available in Python. Maybe it was available in C. And so you see, um, it was easy for him to get that and I guess make his work easy, I guess. So yeah, on automation, that's what I'd say. Uh, you don't have to automate everything. And I guess you automate stuff with time so you start with something small as you go on automating um a couple of things so yeah that's pretty much it it's up saudi i hope you're there and not in a noisy place <laughs> i'm here i'm here <laughs> so, probably you can just uh, for the guests who don't know you, probably you can introduce yourself, then also let us know your methodology in terms of uh, tackling CTFs. Uh, just to mention, I'm in the same team, though I've not played in quite a long time. Kazi uh, Likucha. Yeah, so Saudi, uh, tell us about yourself and uh, your methodology in terms of tackling CTFs. Okay, so my name is Travis Saudi, and uh, I play for Freaks. I play CTFs for, for Freaks, and I work as a security analyst uh, in Silence Silence Africa. Uh, specifically, I'm a SOC analyst. Uh, so I think two, three years ago, actually two years ago is when I was uh, very, very active in CTFs. I used to play uh, pretty much almost all categories except crypto. Uh, I guess the, the crypto you'd say that you're playing is uh, throw something in Cyberchef or or decode. Uh, I can't remember the name. The the one Jones has has showed us. But uh, yeah, so I was tackling web. I was tackling porn, forensics, misc, OSINT. I'm sure pretty much everyone uh, here does that, but uh, whichever the category you're dealing with, uh, there's uh, general steps that you take to solve uh, what challenge that you're, you're handling. Uh, let's say it's web. Uh, so first, you're given your description and um, like the challenge that Jones has just demonstrated, uh, it had a description it had a pretty interesting information that he gave there so that's the first place you start you don't dive into your 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 challenge or whatever you're working you're working on uh, head on you just first start by understanding what it is that the challenge creator wants you to do because uh, most of the time the description will uh, somehow reveal or uh, give you hints as to what the challenge entails. John's uh, description for uh, that particular CTF that or the challenge is demonstrated uh, had a few hints. 
and you could pick out that uh, you needed to chain some vulnerabilities to achieve your objective and the hint was f12 so you probably maybe know that f12 you can view the source code so you know that that's a starting point so once you have that basic uh, maybe skeleton of how you're going to approach the challenge uh, next you maybe try and understand how you're going to solve the challenge so if it's web you could be finding a flag you could be maybe if it's a i don't know crypto or whatever forensics maybe you're cracking passwords or you're exploiting a certain vulnerability that could be objective to reach to the flag so now that you understand your objective uh, keep enumerating and trying to make uh, your exploitation process easier by getting more and more information as to what your challenge entails so let's say if i'm dealing with uh, maybe a simple stack overflow vulnerability uh, part of the gathering information process could be uh, maybe finding your offsets uh, maybe if there's some tricks to it maybe you have a small buffer uh, you're going to use egg hunters, how is your shell code going to look, blah, blah, blah. So once you've gathered enough information, you can start testing it against your your target or coming up with your plan of attack where you try different approaches. It's a CTF, it's not a penetration test or an incident response or something. It's a, it's a CTF, it's definitely going not going to be direct. Uh, as most of you know, they're going to be tricks and you're going to have to be creative. So that's where uh, it's, it separates uh, most uh, CTF players, uh, especially if you're experienced. Some things just come out right uh, to you. Uh, that's why uh, there's a sort of like, a, there's a negative, um, negative, uh, someone has unmuted okay so i was saying that's why there's a like a negative uh, like outlook towards cts with some certain infosec people uh, the, uh, this part where you have to i think outside the box so brainstorm you look for uh, all possible solutions and if all fails you have your online resources, you have your past CTFs. Uh, you can go to CTF time. Uh, you can look at uh, previous write-ups. Uh, I usually sneak to John Collins' blog sometimes when I reach uh, there's, uh, there's a certain uh, type of, uh, of challenge that involves, I think, I don't know if it's password cracking or something. And uh, John Collins uh, did a really good write-up on it I, I i do remember it so i usually go to that particular blog i'm sure he's just smiling or smirking right now <laughs> and i refer yeah. <laughs> or i refer my my previous blogs that i've i've written myself uh yeah. and uh, most importantly as uh, john said john said is a uh, his uh, hacker name is recon it's recon i think that there's something he said about uh trying harder you don't give up you just keep trying i like that john collins mentioned something about uh, teamwork i think that's that's one of the most important parts of uh, a ctf personally i think way much better when i'm around people that uh, provoke my thought process and we we can think together uh, i think a couple of my teammates can attest to that uh, we once played uh, some ctf uh, was it uh, cyber talents uh, around two years ago so we decided this time we won't play it online we'll meet physically so we can each uh, maybe get to know each other better play together i think uh, you guys should try that i don't know if you do but uh, if you have maybe ctfs that are coming up it's good to actually do it uh, physically in person and you get to to uh, provoke each other's thought process, yeah. So that's uh, that's how I used to play CTFs. Uh, I, I hope hopefully they see I make a comeback. I haven't played in a while, yeah.
that's it um before the next question so, you know it's funny that when Trevor is talking about teamwork he's the guy who introduced me to this aspect of playing solo so i remember was it aspire ctf back in 2020 Yes, uh, yes, it's Aspire. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was this team called uh, Cow something, and I asked Trevor, "Are you playing?" And he was like, "Yeah, cow. <laughs> yeah, yeah." I'm playing solo, and I was like, "Ooh, that's interesting." So you want to show people that you can tackle um as many challenges as possible um by yourself. Uh, it's a good practice, maybe if you're overpowered, but uh, yeah, just uh playing uh as a team or playing with someone is way better so yeah yeah i do i do agree on that but uh I think on my defense this the aspire ctf this one's from uh is it equal they usually tackle a specific category and uh most of most of the time you're playing you're playing against time you're not really playing against skill so i find that if i'm working with a couple of guys it might be hard to focus on solving uh, according to time like who's going to solve the fastest who's going to submit the fastest i i prefer the sometimes you may prefer uh, going solo but uh, as john says i still advocate you play with a team that's the best way to learn yeah so i agree with you uh trevor in terms of uh, playing as a team works out because i got to learn uh from you guys from kinako met and the likes before Frix mini was uh Frix mini uh Frix was the only team that i knew so yeah, getting to play alongside with you guys gave me a lot of exposure as well. Yeah, and uh, also something else that uh, uh, Trevor just mentioned, uh, like Peter Juju, whereby he was talking about going back to uh, what John has, uh, the various write-ups he has. Going through and reading all these write-ups gives you an idea of how you can solve a particular challenge because that particular challenge you might end up meeting it in a real life situation so don't assume the write-ups go through the write-ups on medium on uh, ctf time and also various platforms get to see what was someone thinking when he was solving a particular challenge what methodology was he thinking so yeah write-ups also do help out a lot and then now to the last person, then we can call it a night. Uh, Shastiriti. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, I think I won't talk much because it's never in John. Just me. John, is that loud? Too loud? You are about to destroy my ears, so I had to mute. Uh, <laughs> uh, again, I have to say, like, I use headphones, guys. Like, anyway, um, trusty, um, your mic isn't that good. Um, do you have like uh an alternative? Let's just do it next time. Ah, okay, okay. There's none from uh, Frix Mini here. Balwo, I can see this F Society. John, you can pick someone random, uh, someone you know who will play CTFs and probably to give us what they do. Yes, yes, I'm going to pick Grapon from Frix, Team Frix. Uh, yes. This guy is really good in um, Pawn and re and there's a couple of things i learned from him uh back in the day so rip on okay 
isn't in a noisy place. Can you hear me? Hi, guys. Hi. Yeah, I hope, I hope my mic. I hope my mic is not killing anyone. <laughs> Your mic is perfect. <laughs> yeah, 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 happy to be here. Uh well, uh it's been a while since I've also like participated in CTFs. So uh just setting up trying to come back strong. And yeah, I I don't know. I just came here out of curiosity today. Uh because I just wanted to see what guys have been up to and uh also, maybe just pick one, two, three things here. So I'm happy to be here. And I don't know if anyone has any questions from my side, but I didn't expect to talk. So, <laughs> yeah. Maybe, so, like, maybe tell guys, like, uh, how you got to learn, you know, porn and RE, what challenges you face probably uh, as you're doing such challenges. Uh, yeah, maybe just, just something small, I guess. A brief, okay. Yeah, uh, uh, well, uh, for my side, uh, basically, uh, with Rev, it was just, I would say, just curiosity and trying to dig in to understand how computers basically operate at a very low level. So, um, somehow I just found myself one time digging into Radar and uh, getting to really spend so much time uh, on it. There are so many sites, I would say that really have very good ARRI books uh, and uh, also platforms. I could probably drop a few on the chat later. But um, for a fact, I was really just fascinated by how systems operate at a very low level. So I dug into sysin tunnels and also uh, spent more time just around uh, uh, Windows, uh, the Windows API, basically. For porn, it's just curiosity, and with freaks, it's been quite, I would say, a, a very uh, eye-opening and educative engagement, majorly most of the time, because um, you get to interact with people who think very differently and are very strong at different aspects uh, for which they come from. So I've also learned a lot, and uh, I would say on my side, it's majorly around persistence, because Rev can really be stressful, and uh, when you get it, it's majorly just uh, simplified into a few things. Uh, for example, you're just trying to follow specific patterns and then just trying to look for a way out. It's basically just, uh, can I patch the system? Can I not patch this system? So I would say for me, it's just curiosity that drove me to uh, learn how to uh, work backwards with algorithms majorly. And also I would say, as you dive deeper into Rev, of course you would, it's easier when you've had like some form of uh, coding practice or like you have a coding background as you go deeper because you need to understand uh, uh, stuff at a very low level. And majorly that's what I would say for the Rave side. I don't know whether that summarizes <laughs> yeah, that was, everything. That was, that was pretty good. Um, curiosity is very... Um important so and, the and, same thing. and i think this is my first time here i guess yeah no, like first time nah. no like my first, first time, time here? to be here <laughs> yeah so like, just like saudi bro <laughs> ah, <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe one more thing um, you guys more often. yeah pretty yeah much. definitely definitely yeah. we are all like set up now <laughs> uh, please well as presenting <laughs> oh, so i i wanted to say one more thing uh, one more last thing maybe before you close is, uh, don't don't be afraid to don't be afraid to do hard stuff by the way don't be afraid to to dive deeper into like the more technical and more hard stuff ctfs are very difficult actually i, I won't lie to you they're easy ctfs like pico uh and uh, I don't know, and other other easy CTFs. But when you Real. start playing, uh, and you want to maybe start playing competitively and to actually get good, don't be afraid to dive deep. It's it's really scary uh, when you when you're getting uh, into into the really dirty and nasty stuff. It it can get uh, discouraging, but uh, don't be afraid. 
uh, don't remain on uh, easy easy stuff only uh we just tackle the the easy stuff or the basics and you're okay with it don't be okay with 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 the with the basic stuff cyber security is always evolving the there's new stuff out there don't be afraid to learn uh don't have that uh that conservative mindset it can uh, stick on you and it will hold you back i've i've experienced it before i i did take a break for a long time last year but most of it was a, a like a self development journey or i don't know self actualization or something like that but there are things i had to come to terms with so yeah keep that at the back of your mind yeah when you're doing your stuff also curiosity as uh, grapeon and uh, john collins uh, have said uh, that is the only thing that will keep you motivated and interested because uh, you can't tackle super hard stuff without being curious so yeah curious uh now talk about curiosity i i hope there's someone who is getting curious to get into blockchain security crypto security and the likes we can organize for a session on that i've not had anyone requesting for a session on talk about blockchain security so if you know someone or if you have knowledge we are looking for guys like that as well to get to know what it entails uh yeah and always feel free to go go outside your borders go outside your boundaries to dig deep yeah uh still i don't know if you got earphones or we wait for next time uh if you're waiting for him to answer and maybe uh he hasn't you are trying to you're trying to spoil my ears but anyway he said next time so next time yeah so thank you guys for joining in uh we'll meet up next friday then uh yeah we'll talk more now from next friday where we'll have our first box friday session uh looking forward to a very interesting sessions coming up uh i'll be sharing the links if you want to present on the various platforms i'll share on discord uh the announcements part i'll share on twitter and instagram as well as linkedin uh sessions happen from 8 to 10 pm so might fall somewhere between one hour one and a half hours to two hours yeah so if you want to present reach out to me I'll guide you on that, then we can arrange. So have a great night, guys. Uh, happy hacking if you're going to tackle uh, CTF this weekend. Wishing you all the best. Uh, yeah, let's meet up next week.